is your state or city sending out for stimulus checks? Well, I know many of you are wondering whether you can claim extra stimulus money. And here's what you have to know. Changing, where is this going? Well, you'll have to go over and ask that in the Senate. Uh, but we do believe that the, what we call the For the People Act, and now called the Freedom to Vote Act, is a bill that very much had the uh, input of Senator Manchin. If you're on Social Security, SSI, SSDI, RRB, or VA beneficiaries, continue watching this video to get the latest scoop on the most important stimulus check and Social Security news. Here it is, folks. Stimulus checks have definitely been a financial lifeline for many Americans during the crisis. So, it is really great to know that the relief payments are now back in multiple states across the country. Many of you are also wondering if you qualify for a new stimulus check. These are stimulus payments from state governments that have decided to take action for residents. Now, certain states like California have sent out monthly stimulus checks and also in the sunshine state of Florida. It has also been confirmed that they'll be sending out a payment of up to $1,100 to first responders and educators. That's including teachers and principals. If you live in Florida, you could receive an additional $2,000 stimulus check or $1,000 stimulus check depending on your job. If you live in Georgia, you could also get $1,000 stimulus checks. If you live in Maine, you can receive up to $825, up to $285 if you are a Maine resident. And also in Maryland, Marylanders can expect to receive a check of $300. If you live in New Mexico, you can get up to $750 of a stimulus check. This is as long as you didn't qualify for federal crisis stimulus payments, all done in the past. But let's not forget this, 36 million Americans are still facing poverty as Congress has not reinstated the expanded monthly child tax credit payments. For the last six months, 36 million families, folks, have been receiving these monthly checks from the IRS. All right, you happy? Yeah. All right. <laughs> she ends up paying the same amount into the Social Security Trust Fund as he does. Okay, so he's paying 6.2%. She's going to pay a much smaller percentage. If President Biden's bill is passed, families will receive a child tax credit payment this January. But the bad news is that the Build Back Better bill is still limbo. It's hanging in the balance. It's so disappointing to see that lawmakers are not trying their best to get these relief payments reinstated. Although the child tax credit payments have, have temporarily stopped, grocery prices still haven't. The reality is, is that the payments have really helped millions of families stay afloat. And it cannot be paused right now, especially as the crisis continues to worsen. In 2021, the enhanced program was projected to increase consumer spending by $27 billion. But as families cut down their spending, a stimulus check can also be sent out. ...in all their lives. That is unfair. That is unjust. That is flat out wrong. When we're a body that can pass out trillions of dollars of tax cuts to the nation's wealthiest 1%, and yet we can't take care of people who have paid into the system because Congress has not fulfilled its obligation and responsibility, now is the time to act. And under democratic leadership, that will take place. People say to me often, well, what's different? What's different is we have a democratic House, a democratic Senate, and most importantly, a president who believes that this is a sacred trust. A president also, as Matt Cotwright knows, has said, look, we're going to end WEP and GPO. And for your listeners and for your viewers, what that means for all you school teachers, for your firefighters, for you police officers, for your municipal employees that were penalized under a system who have worked hard and played by the rules, the president has called for its repeal. And that means benefits flowing to people that should, who rightfully deserve and should rightfully get them. I would add that that's been a bipartisan support here in the Congress, and we do have bipartisan support for this bill across the nation. No one yet on the other <clears throat> side has signed up, but yet all across the nation, in large numbers, more than 80% of Democrats, more than 68% of Republicans and more than 74% of independents all favor increasing benefits because they know of the security and the promise and the necessity of Social Security. I want to recognize the gentleman from Pennsylvania 
who is an original co-sponsor, Madam Speaker, of this, as are you, who understands how critical this is to Pennsylvanians and everyone across the nation. Well, I thank the gentleman, and uh, I thank the gentleman particularly, uh, not only for authoring and helping all, all the rest of us co-sponsor this important legislation, but in particular uh, for mentioning the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania here late this afternoon. Uh, it was uh, Pennsylvania that was instrumental in actually passing the Social Security Administration, the Social Security Act back in the 30s. Uh, it was a huge fight. It was a time when Republicans called the concept of Social Security, Madam Speaker, communism. They called it that. They said it would lead to horrible things. They said it would be the ruination of the American economy and the American democracy, and it was communism. That's what the Republicans called the, the whole idea of Social Security when the Roosevelt administration came up with it. And the Roosevelt administration was having a huge fight with the Republican-dominated Supreme Court of the United States. And they were against it. And they kept ruling that uh, Roosevelt's programs, National Re Labor Relations Act, uh, 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 all of these programs that, that Roosevelt came, uh, Securities and Exchange Commission, all of these programs that Roosevelt came up with to try to work our way out of the Great Depression, the Supreme Court was uh, invalidating as uh, unconstitutional under the Commerce Clause. And, um, and it was actually a member of the United States Supreme Court, a Republican member, named Owen J. Roberts, who saved the day, Congressman Larson. He saved the day because he changed his mind about the Commerce Clause and how it applied to the Social Security Act. Owen J. Roberts was a terrific, terrific trial lawyer from Philadelphia. He was a, a prosecutor. He was in the U.S. Attorney's Office, and he personally handled the Teapot Dome scandal. He prosecuted the, uh, the, uh, the, the criminals who perpetrated the Teapot Dome scandal back in the 20s. And his career flourished and he started a law firm where I actually practiced for two years as a young lawyer myself in Philadelphia. And Owen J. Roberts went on uh, to, uh, uh, to, to join uh, the Supreme Court of the United States as an associate justice. And he was one of the Republican members and there was a great controversy about whether Social Security would be ruled constitutional. Roberts thought about it, and to his great and everlasting credit, and to the credit of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, he changed his mind. 